Hello and welcome. This is Beverly Fells Jones, the Silver Fox of Consciousness, and I want to welcome you to my podcast. I am an author, speaker, seminar leader, and what I want you to know is that on this show, I talk about how to expand your world of thought, explore the world of positive thinking, Bible-based law of attraction and consciousness from many points of view. I truly intend to share with you information that will enlighten and empower you in your life. I'm here to encourage you to think in the positive and show that miracles truly can happen. I believe you and I and everyone on this earth has been given the power of the word and thought to create the life that you desire. Yes, I do want to welcome you here. It is, well, fall is here um, and uh, the weather is getting, well, in Texas, this is the weather I call my northern summer because this weather reminds me of when I lived in Pittsburgh in the summertime. It's just really nice and comfortable outside. You're not just sweating because of all the heat. So today, you know, many of us have said we wanted to start our own businesses. I've done many, I'll call them many businesses in my life. I did interior decorating. I did a flea market stand a couple times. I've done soap making and selling my scarves and just all kinds of things. But when you start a business, you you want to ask yourself a number of things. You know, well, why do you want to start a business? Number one, what's your what is your motivation behind it? And what kind of business do you want to start? Where? Who will you serve? Who will your clients be? And how will you do it? So these are all questions we should ask when we want to go solo. So continuing on in my series of reading stories from the book, Manifestations, True Stories of Bringing the Imagined into Reality, I am going to be reading from the presentation or the contribution by Catherine Gates. And she shares with us her story of manifesting her business by going within. Because one of the greatest things, the greatest motivator for you is yourself. And dealing with, and I've said this many times, getting your subconscious mind on board to what you want to do. But also getting the universal mind, getting infinite intelligence, getting the God of your heart on board also. Charles F. Hanel, and that's H-A-A-N-E-L, and he is the creator of a 24-week program called the Master Key System that was initially published in 1912, well, written in 1912 and pop published in 1916 and I've been going through we're on week 24 now this is a 24 week correspondence course that he wrote but in the very beginning in part one his very first week he tells us something that is very important and that is relevant to the story I'm going to read you today He says, there is a world within, a world of thought and feeling and power, of light and life and beauty, and although invisible, its forces are mighty. The world within is governed by mind. When we discover this world, we shall find the solution for every problem the cause for every effect. 
And since the world within is subject to our control, all laws of power and possession are also within our control. Because the world without is a reflection of the world within. So how do you think? What is going on inside of you? And so Catherine's going to share with us just how she got to her world within to create her external world. And she titled this The Business of Manifesting. She says, I began my business 15 years ago and it is still running and it is profitable. I credit its success to manifesting. When my son was a toddler, I decided I wanted to own a business after having been in the corporate world for many years. My only requirement was to have a business that allowed me to work from home and provide the flexibility to be available to my young son. That left questions for me to answer. What would my business be? What did I want to do? What could I offer? What am I capable of? And most importantly, how am I going to answer these questions? We have been conditioned to ask who, what, where, when, why, and how. We don't need to. It's not our job to figure that out. When first letting go of the wheel to let source guide you, it's not always easy. So let me stop here just for a second where she says, letting go of the wheel to let source guide you. She is referring to infinite wisdom, the universe, God, whatever you refer to this inner guidance that you have. She goes on to say, it takes practice. Once you can let go of the questions and let source take over, it happens, I promise. It did for me and it will for you too. Figuring it out with a book or talking to a career planner or forcing a business idea because it sounded good on paper didn't resonate with me. Instead, I went right to the source, literally, and asked for an idea. So I'm going to pause here. Have you ever stopped and asked for an answer? Have you ever stopped and asked what your next step would be? Have you ever stopped and asked to be given a sign of what you should do? If you have, you have been depending on infinite wisdom to come to you and give you the way that you should go. So let's continue with her story. Every day when my son napped, I meditated. Before meditating, I set my intention to inspire me with the what my business will be. Lo and behold, one day that I'll never forget, I was walking through the old Navy parking lot with my son and bam, the inspiration hit. Just like that. That's frequently how it happens. Answers and inspiration don't always come during meditation. They can come later. So always be on the lookout for them. The universe inspired me with the perfect business idea that married my needs and talents with a service that offered solutions to parents. In 2004, having an online business of that type was groundbreaking and translated into instant success. That was no coincidence because it was a divinely inspired business idea that I took inspired action to create. I want to, I want to repeat this, right? It was a divinely inspired business idea that I took inspired action to create. I'm always telling you about 
inspired action. This idea comes to you or you read something or you hear something and you go, oh yeah, that's absolutely, I got to do that. And your energy level increases, your, your excitement increases, and you go get it done. And this is what she's talking about. That it's doing, I mean, sometimes we get ideas and then we don't do anything. And so therefore, it fails or it never happens. So she goes on to say, once my business was up and running, I followed my intuition daily to operate it, to figure out my next move. I stay connected to the divine. It is still running profitably today, most because I listen to my int intuition. It is through your intuition that we communicate with the divine. Following divine guidance by listening to our intuition, taking inspired action, and engaging our passion is a recipe for success. But it's not all of the story. When we are forced, when we force, push, or second guess is when our dreams don't always come true. Even if we want it, if we aren't aligned with inspired action, chances of it manifesting are smaller. Manifesting uses the principles of the law of attraction, which states we must be a vibrational match to receive whatever we desire. Like attracts like. To be a vibrational match requires paying attention to your thoughts and keeping them positive, especially about what you desire. To bring in the energy of manifesting. Beliefs must also be in alignment with what we desire. Beliefs are extremely powerful and are critical to success in manifesting. They define our world, yet they have no meaning unless we give them meaning. For the best results, it is essential to call out the ones that don't line up with our desires. Beliefs come in two types. Okay, you ready for this? All right, here's what she says. Limiting, I can't do this. Or empowering, wow, I'm so excited to do this. Always take note of which types of belief you are harboring. Okay, now she's going to go into my world in this next paragraph because she's speaking my language. A classic book, yet still relevant, Think and Grow Rich, gives the perfect example of the importance of beliefs. The author, Napoleon Hill, interviewed 500 of the mega wealthy of his day, such as the Rockefellers, the Carnegies, the Vanderbilts, to discover their secret for creating wealth. The common denominator for all of the tycoons was their belief in themselves, not their skill sets or intelligence, although certainly those factored in. As a result, he coined the notable phrase that still stands today, you must believe to achieve. I often add to it, that which you are willing to receive. So let me stop there. Scripture says, believe that you have received and it will be yours. But you also have to believe that you can achieve it. So you can't believe that you've received if you can't think of this as being yours and possible. As she continues, one reason I was able to manifest so seamlessly is that I never once questioned if this was the right thing for me to do. I had no doubts or resistance. My beliefs were empowering, not limiting, which propelled me to run with it. I was confident in this decision because it was divinely inspired and I could feel the resonance in it. It felt right. When you can feel that, there is no reason to doubt. Letting go of doubt, fear, and anxiety will open a space to allow you to stand in your true divine power. In that space, you are connected to your intuition 
and you know this is right for you. Having that certainty, act on the divine inspiration. That is when the magic, the manifesting happens. We are all divine beings that have the ability to manifest anything we desire. We do it every day and don't realize it. Remember that parking spot up front you wanted and got? That's manifesting. Remember that coupon or discount code you wanted and suddenly someone offered it to you? That's manifesting. If you don't know you manifested or how you did it, it's hard to repeat it. Let me repeat that. If you don't know how if you don't know you manifested or how you did it, it's hard to repeat it. So, now is the time for us to remember that we can manifest and how to do it. Step into your power. Know that you are a divine creator. Meditate to feel into that. Talk to the divine. Once you have this level of awareness, manifesting happens with ease. Troublesome thoughts float out of your mind effortlessly. Belief systems that are no longer resonate fall by the wayside. A calm, peaceful knowing overtakes you and you feel connected. In this connection, you have wisdom and knowing. From this, take inspired action. And yes, you must take inspired action when you get an answer to your question. You must believe that the world within shows what the world without. That going back and investigating how things came into your life and thinking about the first time you thought about it or the first time you doubted it or the first time you said something that showed up in your life. It does. It shows up. For many years, I was not one that believed in manifesting. I've always believed that it was from my external habits or the things that I did. And I had to do this and I had to do that in order for something to come into my life. And then as I started studying and doing, reading Hanel and Napoleon Hill, of course, and Neville Goddard and Jose Silva and um, and the scriptures, it got back to the way I thought, how I acted on those thoughts, how I believed in myself or didn't believe into myself. But there are steps in this manifesting process. And yeah, it can be simple as meditating and and, and believing in yourself, but there are additional steps that you incorporate into your life to make this whole idea of things coming into your life and changing your external world. And that's one of the reasons I teach the master class for the book, Think and Grow Rich. And if you're interested in that, you can go to tinyurl dot com forward slash think rich 2019 so tiny t-i-n-y u-r-l dot com forward slash think rich 2019 and this is my page on eventbrite and in that section whatever courses i'm teaching especially the think and grow rich class are listed there and you can get more information so who is Catherine Cates that tells us this story? Well, she's helped thousands go from doubt to making their dreams come true. Primarily business-minded women finding direction, focus, and success with her unique blend of intuition and 25 plus years in the business world. As an intuitive visionary with her feet on the ground, Catherine gives you easy strategies on which low-hanging fruit to pick first, getting results faster, building confidence, and inspiring you to achieve even bigger successes. Fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. Transform your mindset. Turn your life and business from ordinary to extraordinary. And Catherine can be reached at her website, 
Catherine, and that's with a C, Cates.com. I'll put it in the description, and you can send an email to me at, and that's it, me, at CatherineCates.com. I'll put this information in the description. But you have the power to change your life. And remember what Hanel has said. There is a world within, a world of thought and feeling and power, of light and life and beauty and although invisible, it forces are mighty. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up or and subscribe to the channel um, if you're listening to this on YouTube. If you're on any of the other podcasting platforms, please leave a comment and um, sign up to be notified when I upload a new video or a new audio. Thank you for listening today. Please share the link to this show with your friends and family so that they can learn how to be the best that they can be. Visit my website at commandingyourlife.com and follow me on Facebook. Have any suggestions for the show? Just contact me by emailing Beverly at commandingyourlife.com. Be sure to join me on the next episode. As you have believed, let it be done to you, and it is so.